Hello Explorers here at Fort Snelling. This is Exploring with Jay and we're going to explore this uh, area a little bit here. It's a fort that was built uh, back in the mid 1800's. Never seen uh, uh, any bit of warfare. Uh, actually uh, had a bigger part in the Native American lives. The fort is still open, uh, as far as like museum type of thing. Obviously it's not in use as a military installation anymore. These are some of the old buildings from the era. We'll be doing the actual fort here in just a few minutes. There you have it. It remains the largest mass execution in U.S. history. <laughs> well, we are at Fort Snelling. If you look at it on Google, it's the unorganized area of Fort Snelling. But uh, reading some of the signs out here, this has got a pretty dark history. I like this one here. The internment camp. Dakota people in this camp suffered malnutrition and outbreaks of disease and between 130 and 300 died within its walls in 1862 and 63. The prisoners also endured assaults and violence at the hands of soldiers and local civilians. Amid all the sickness and these great tribulations, remember Tawakin, also known as Gabriel Renville, Assistant in Dakota that held in the camp, it seemed doubtful at night whether a person would be alive in the morning. In 1863, the remaining people in the camp were placed on steamboats and sent to the Crow Creek Reservation in South Dakota. It's pretty awful. Some sort of little garden. Fields and gardens. Which might be how it looked back then. Obviously on a bigger scale.
Looks like the main gate. Guard shacks up there. Probably see them walking all on the wall here, back in the era. Another guard shacks up there, all that on the shack with posts. Yeah, and these little slits in the walls here, those are gun turrets, tur gun holes, stick your gun out to shoot, shoot people that aren't supposed to be here. would have been back then. Complete quiet. Wouldn't have any sound of that traffic. Wouldn't have this guy flying around. No airport noise. It would be dead silent. Peaceful. That is the Mendota Bridge, by the way. Ugh. Look at all them stickers. Yeah, I don't feel like picking them damn things off my clothes. Try to get a better view over here. There is a trail that comes down here, but. All these damn thistles. Now, uh, right now I'm just doing the fort itself. There are other buildings um, over on the other side of the area here. There are some uh, really old abandoned buildings back there, but they are heavily guarded. There's a fence around all of them. Can't really get in there. And every time I kind of pull up in there, there's a cop sitting there watching me. So, yeah, I obviously don't want people in there. Unfortunately, take pictures from afar. Maybe I'll get a few of them on here. But it uh, used to be the old post office. I think those buildings were more um, after the World Wars. Uh, I'm looking at old pictures of this place this path right here actually used to be a road down to the, the river where they'd put their boats stuff like that but it's pretty impressive once again Guy got a guy had to grab a metal detector and do some metal detecting around here. I'd love to get in here and actually do a full video of the entire inside of this fort.
Well, let's climb it. I'm gonna shut this off for a minute so I can get my fat ass up there. So I was trying to encircle the fort and uh, came across this little ledge here. I don't think I'm going much farther than this. Yeah. It's that first step, it's a doozy. That's a long way down. As you can see by that sign right there, it's, it's a long way down. Yeah, I guess I gotta head back. A little view of the uh, of the fort before I start moving. And you can see why I built it here. I mean, back then all these trees weren't uh, as high as they were right now. So you have a pretty good overview of the river, which is why they wanted to build the fort here to protect it. <laughs> 